Let's face it. The future will be decentralized energy production. Here on Chalk Talk, we have been following this trend for years. But now, my friends, it's time to get energized. But where do we start? How do we electrify the world? One decentralized node at a time? With this here Chalk Talk, let's start here. Hi, I'm Amelia Dalton, host of Chalk Talk. Increasing electric vehicle sales, decreasing battery sales, and a shift in energy consumption has made energy storage systems more important than ever before. In this episode of Chalk Talk, Chez Warner from Amphenol FCI Basics and I investigate the functions and components involved in commercial energy storage systems, residential energy storage systems, and EV charging stations. We investigate the qualifications needed for connectors and energy storage systems and what kind of connectors Amphenol FCI Basics offers for your next energy storage system design. And before we get started, don't forget to click that link. There you can find even more information about this topic from Amphenol FCI Basics. Hi, Chez. Thank you so much for joining me. Hey, yeah. Thanks for the opportunity. It's very exciting to talk about energy storage systems today. Excellent. Okay, so we are talking about energy storage systems today. But before we dig into the details, tell me a little bit about yourself and FCI Basics. A little bit about myself. So I'm working for Amphenol for the FCI Basics business unit, which is one of the larger business units of Amphenol. And this is a business unit highly specialized in PCB interconnect. And I've been around in the connector industry for quite some time because I've been working in the industry for more than 20 years in different kinds of functions from business development, portfolio management kind of roles. And currently I'm responsible for marketing and distribution for the basics business unit. And I'm also managing a very exciting portfolio of wire to board interconnect. So just very briefly about the FCI basics business unit, like I already mentioned, we are really the PCB interconnect specialist. So we have a really nice portfolio of wire to board, board to board, and input output and FFC FPC connectors with some leading brand names, really recognized by the industry like Berkstack or Berkstick. So with these connectors, we can solve many, many design challenges of components engineers in a variety of markets from automotive to IT data comm, consumer or industrial systems. Okay, now energy storage is a hot topic today, but what trends in particular are you seeing motivating this discussion? Yeah, so it is really a hot topic. And what we really see at the one hand, we see some strong initiatives from governments around the world, which really drive developments in energy storage systems. For example, in Europe, we have the 2030 climate targets with the aim to have at least 40% renewable energy sources by 2030. Or in China, which is currently still having a lot of carbon emissions, but they have set a target to have an immense capacity of wind and solar power installed by 2030 as well. And for example, in the US, right, where the Department of Energy you know, has several initiatives and they were really investing heavily in the electrical grid. So that's on the one hand from governments. And at the other hand, we see some technology advances in the industry, like really cost of batteries coming down drastically, right? Also driven by the increase in electrical vehicle sales. We see enormous um, amount of increase in renewables. I mean, we see more solar plants, more wind farms. All of these developments lead into energy storage because the essence of energy storage is that it plays a very pivotal role in all of these developments, right? It is essential for a reliable, effective electricity grid. That makes sense. Now, what kind of markets are we looking at here? Yeah, so if we look at the whole energy supply chain, so where energy is being generated, for example, by solar panels or by wind farms or by power plants, we can map out three different areas. First of all, the commercial energy storage systems, and we will talk about that in a little bit more, I guess. These are the more industrial scale storage systems you'll find typically near wind farms or solar farms. Second, we have residential systems. 
residential scale energy storage systems, which you find in residential areas, your home, for example. And last but not least, we have also the third one, charging stations. We're all familiar with this, I guess, because these stations are, of course, where you can charge your electrical vehicle. So when we're talking about commercial systems in particular, what kind of components are included here? Yeah, so if you look at from the outside to a commercial uh, energy storage system, you might think, well, it's just like a big container and likely there are just like uh, batteries stacked inside. However, there's much more to it because the function of this commercial energy storage system is not only to store energy, hence the battery packs, right? But it's also a very important part to control, to measure, and to communicate. So therefore, we will find much more than batteries inside these containers, right? So next to the battery packs, yeah, an obvious element of this, you will find a battery management system yeah, that monitors the systems and manages the efficient control and monitoring of the battery system itself. And then, for example, we have the energy management system that includes functionalities that maintain the optimal and safe operations of the energy storage systems itself, so the container, so you will. And then we also have a very important element, which is the power control system. So the power control system that controls the output of the energy storage system, it controls the power distribution to the grid. So quite some electronics in there. And by doing so, by controlling this locally in the energy storage system, it limits the cost of potential additional equipment needed on the electricity grid. So can we look at each of the components in a bit more depth? What about the battery rack? What are we talking about here? Yeah, so if we look at a little more depth at the components, and the obvious one is, of course, the battery rack, an essential part, obviously, of an energy storage system. And a battery rack is basically built out of different battery trays. Yeah, so what you typically do is you place cells to each other, you connect them to each other with a module controller on top, and then you create this little battery pack, then they are packed into trays and they're stacked together, and you have this big battery rack. It's a kind of modular system. Yeah. And there's quite some electronics on there, which we'll talk about later, because the purpose is to make these battery packs efficient, but also safe. So what about the actual construction of these battery packs? There are different ways to put them together, right? Yeah. If we zoom into the battery packs, I believe we typically see three building practices. If we go from left to right, we see battery pack solutions where the battery cells are being connected with help of a flexible printed circuit. A flex is low profile, can easily bend it, and really means easy um, to install. In the middle, we see a discrete wire solution with also a centralized module controller. That's the, the PCB board, which is placed on top, which connects the cells by means of wires. And on the right-hand side, we see the decentralized situation where you see like smaller module controller boards on the side on each individual battery cell. And you can imagine if you go from left to right, the wiring complexity increases. And I would say the flexible printed circuit solution and the discrete wire solution in the middle, so with the centralized module controller, are the most common ones. However, this really depends on the preference of the uh, the design team and a little bit also on the actual application. The two on the left-hand side, I would say, are the most common ones. What about the module controller you mentioned earlier? What are we looking at here? Yeah, so what we're looking at here is different types of interconnect being used for both module controllers and battery management systems. So these are small boxes, basically, being used in energy storage system. So on the one hand, we see these flex connections being used and these create wire connections being used. And the interesting thing about this is especially for these, what I would call outside of the box connections, is that we see quite a lot of, I would say, automotive grade interconnect. Yeah, so these are the connectors which connect the box with the battery pack and where design engineers typically like interconnect systems, which are vibration proof, high temperature resistance, sometimes even waterproof. These are typical characteristics you will find in automotive proven connector systems. So that's on the outside. And if you look in the inside, I mean, typically like smaller boards are being placed on the main board. And that's where you see the true standard types of connectors like pin on socket and mezzanine types of connectors. Yeah, so really the pin headers and receptacles and the mezzanine ones 
which are also called the blade and beam systems to connect smaller add-on boards on these boxes. So I'm also very interested in the residential energy storage systems as well. Can we delve into the details of those? Yeah, absolutely. Let's have a closer look because it's interesting. This is everything around our house. What kind of components are included in these types of systems? I guess we all know that, you know, our homes are becoming more sophisticated. I mean, we are familiar with home automation, which is you know, typically building automations for homes or even like smart homes, right? These systems which monitor and control lighting or appliances, those kind of things. And the same is true if you look at residential energy storage systems, which is playing a more important role in transforming the global energy consumption. As you might recall in the, one of the first slides, it was mentioned that we see more decentralized energy production. I mean, this is a good example of it, right? Because we see here a complete system, which we also called a home energy management system. And that system comes out of several components from solar panels being connected to a solar inverter, to a battery pack, and of course, a smart meter. We're all familiar with that. And of course, the switchboard. So several components comprising the home energy management system. So I would imagine that connectors would play an important role in these kind of energy storage systems. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, what you see is that home energy management systems are subsystems, but they are connected to each other. And also inside of the components is a ton of interconnect. So important role for connectors in these uh, applications. And what we picture here is a typical building practice for a solar inverter, right? A very important component of residential energy storage. This is also a, what I would call a box built application, right? Several PCB boards inside. And because power board needs to be separate from the main board and even from communication or signal, you see several boards being used. And I guess we all know, we've all seen inverters. These are typically larger boxes, right? And it's also because of the component size inside, not so much the connectors, but more related to, for example, the capacitors, right? They are quite sizable. And also because system designers want to have some airflow. So they like to keep these boards apart because these systems can produce quite some heat. And interesting, you know, for us as a leading connector manufacturer, I mean, you can find up to 10 different types of interconnect in this application, like an inverter which not only connects PCBs to each other, but also displays for the interface, sensors, all kinds of measurements and systems, et cetera. And since, as an example, an inverter plays an important role in the home energy management system, design engineers really like to build systems that last, right? You want to install that in solar panel with the inverter, you want it to last. So typically what we see, they look for proven interconnect types. Yeah, so proven interconnect types, which withstand higher temperatures, facilitate blind mating, support long system life with proper contact systems, for example, with dual beams. So because they build this to last in houses under sometimes severe circumstances. That makes sense. Now, we also need to discuss EV charging systems as well, right? Absolutely. So what are the biggest considerations that come into play with EV charging systems? What kind of components are we talking about here? I would say the most important component of an EV charging system is the supply equipment itself. And obviously, if the designers work on this, they need to follow international safety standards and regulations. And this has an impact on the PCB design and layout. They also need to take care of communication. Nowadays, we talk about a charging experience, right? You need to interface with customers. You need to communicate wirelessly through a user interface or through an app. And last but not least, also very important, you can see it on the right-hand side, the charge level. There are typically four levels, and depending on the customer need, how fast to recharge the uh, electrical vehicles, this has a very, very significant impact on the design of a charging system. And in terms of components, I mean, again, several subsystems comprise this charging system, yeah? Next to the supply of power, management and monitoring, communication is key in combining everything. Okay, so how do connectors come into play here? Yeah, so if we zoom in on the control electronics part of EV charging, of course, there's quite some power management, obviously, in these equipment. We see very similar PCB interconnect types being used as for battery management systems or inverters or for those modules. And this control part typically 
consists out of a main board with several add-on boards. I mean, designers like to build modular systems to expand main boards over time. You typically see like a user interface. You see a communication board also connecting to cooling systems. And of course, you have the processing the power you need it also typically on a separate board. And also for these systems, I mean, you know, these charging poles are quite sizable. So there's some space in the application. So typically you don't see like the smallest miniaturized connectors being used here. I mean, they have the advantage of consuming little space, right? The high density. Maybe a disadvantage is that, you know, during installation, you have a higher risk of mismating and damaging a PCB. So you see also some quite sizable connector types being used. So what does Amphenol have in terms of connectors for energy storage systems? Amphenol, you know, is one of the larger interconnect manufacturers, offers a ton of connector solutions for energy storage systems. And if we look at the FCA basics business units, so more focused on PCB interconnect, we offer all the different types to make component engineers succeed in their applications. And I've highlighted some few of these connectors. On the top left, you see a couple of different types of automotive grades. So automotive proven wire to board, wire to wire and flex to board interconnect. So that's the micro space, wire lock and flex lock family. And I specifically want to also mention the waterproof version. And you might think of that's kind of weird because, for example, in a commercial energy storage system, what I mean, it's an enclosed environment. Well, <laughs> moisture is an issue in those kind of applications. So we see quite some use of waterproof connectors. Design engineers don't want to take the risk. So next to these highly reliable, vibration resistant automotive interconnect connectors, we have also a very nice portfolio of FFC, FPC typically being used to connect an LCD screen. And what really customers like about our systems is the cable lock system for strong cable retention. Then we have on the lower left-hand side, what I would call the modular system. So really industry recognized brand names like Quickie or Burkstick or PV. So this is typically the pin on socket types of interconnect you'll find anywhere on board, especially in inverters. And then we have a family of these mezzanine connectors, Burkstack and Conan. Scoop proof connectors, so impossible almost to destroy the contact system while mating or unmating. And then we have some new products, you know, also specifically developed for energy storage. First of all, combo stack, which is a hybrid connector. So it combines signal and power. And that really reduces space, also enables easier assembly. And the sister of combo stack, I would say, combo lock, that's the wire to board solution. So a hybrid solution for power and signal for easy installation, easier cable management, those kind of things. So a ton of products, but you know these are uh, the ones I would like to highlight because these are the main common types we see being used for energy storage systems. Excellent. Well, this has been a lot to take in today. Can you recap your main points for me? Yeah, we talked a lot about the systems and the different types of components, but I believe the essence for this type of application, so energy storage system, whether it's a commercial or residential system, is that it is a what I would refer to as a demanding application, yeah, where specifications and performance matter because these applications are built to last. And I believe we offer some key attributes in our connector families I just shown, like reliable contact systems yeah, built around dual beam box contacts. Yeah. So during mating, you cannot damage the contact beams. And also this offers, because of dual beam system, reliability over time. We offer the families in the middle, these mezzanine connectors with screw proof housing. So they offer a certain mating tolerance. So during mating, these connectors find their way, which allows for blind mating. And last but not least, I mean, all these connectors I showed are being developed for demanding application. They're built around reliable contact systems based on phosphor bronze materials, for example, and they build on high-performance thermoplastics, so high-temperature plastics which remain dimensional stable over time. So really to suit the needs for component engineers, we're looking for connected connectivity that lasts. Excellent. Well, I think that's all I have time for today. Thank you so much for joining me. It was a pleasure. Thank you very much. And before we go, you didn't forget to click that link, did you? There you can find even more information about this topic from Amphenol FCI Basics. 
For Chalk Talks, I'm Amelia Dalton from eejournal.com. For more Chalk Talks, head on over to the Chalk Talks section of EE Journal. You can't miss it, it's right across the top. Or head on over to YouTube, youtube.com slash eejournal.